welcome back to the course on algorithmic information dynamics. Finally, we are about to learn what algorithmic information dynamics is and how new methods may provide new, fresh, and hopefully better means to deal with causation. You will see how we will start putting together all what you learned and we had to go through, from information theory to graphs and networks and from computability to dynamical systems. In this lecture, we will contrast computable measures such as Shannon entropy and algorithmic complexity when it comes to characterizing an object, particularly a special graph that we created for this purpose. So we saw in previous units how entropy tries to quantify randomness in a very different way than algorithmic randomness, and how entropy would miss some algorithmic properties in objects such as sequences if these lack statistical regularities. In a strict way, algorithmic randomness is a generalization of the typical application of entropy. Examples where entropy as a tool would fail to shed light on the nature of objects without access to the source include the mathematical constant pi, the chamber known constant, and the erdős copland constant, to mention a few. Another example that we also covered was that of the Q-Morse sequence. Entropy can only find statistical regularities if no other method to infer the nature of the source is available to entropy, a method such as algorithmic complexity, that, while it is difficult to estimate, it does not depend on beliefs, such as the underlying probability distributions to which we rarely have full access to or full knowledge. Of course, one can design all sorts of more fancy measures on top of Shannon entropy, but as long as they rely on the same principles, they will all have exactly the same shortcomings. So we need tools to complement statistical ones, such as Shannon entropy, to um, try to make uh, progress. One such tool to complement entropy to infer the nature of the source, and potentially the source itself, in the form of a mechanistic model, is to introduce computation into the challenge of causation. The idea is that if an object has an algorithmic regularity, it can be in principle quantified by a universal and non-computable measure such as algorithmic complexity and, as we saw before, this comes in the form of a question regarding whether the object or the sequence can be characterized as random versus not random according to the length of the computer program that can generate such object. One major challenge in modern physics is the proper characterization of network systems for use in fields ranging from physics to chemistry. A common problem is the description of order parameters with which to characterize the complexity of a network. Graph complexity has traditionally been characterized using graph theoretic measures, as we have seen before, such as the degree distribution of a graph, clustering coefficient, edge density and community or modular structures. For graphs as well, one can find how the limitations of Shannon entropy and any computable measure will require you to first define a feature of interest in order to apply the measure. Here for example is an attempt to come up with a very general measure of graph entropy where G is a graph and I is a property of the graph G. A property can be how many ones or zeros its adjacency matrix uh, may have, or how the degree distribution of the graph looks like, and we will see how Shannon entropy will depend on the choice of I, making entropy to be quite fragile to the choice of feature of interest. That is, um, entropy is not a graph invariant. We also saw before how not having access to any probability distribution but only access to G, traditionally this leads to taking the underlying probability distribution of G for a given feature I denoted by P of G to be the uniform distribution which makes entropy to behave as a simple counting function of symbols, counting for example how many times a feature I occurs as we inspect G for property I. We introduced a method to build a family of recursive graphs with maximal entropy but low algorithmic complexity. Hence, graphs that appear statistically random but are, however, of low algorithmic randomness. 
and thus causally or recursively generated. Moreover, these graphs may have maximal entropy for some lossless descriptions, but minimal entropy for some other lossless descriptions of exactly the same object, with both descriptions characterizing the same object, and only that object. Thereby, demonstrating how entropy may fail at unequivocally and unambiguously characterizing a graph independent of a particular feature of interest. We denote by ZK a graph unequivocally constructed as follows. Let a node labeled as 1 be connected to another node labeled 2 to be a starting graph G. If a node with label n has degree n, we call, it, we call that node a core node, otherwise we call it a supportive node. Iteratively, add a node n plus 1 to g such that the number of core nodes in g is maximized. That is, we aim at adding nodes whose number of edges is the same number as their labels. So we keep adding nodes trying to connect each node in a way such that, again, every node eventually gets the same number of edges than its label determines. So node 2 would have 2 edges, node 3 would have 3 edges, node 4 would have 4 edges, and so on. Here we can see core nodes colored in red when they have already reached the number of edges that their label establishes and those nodes that are still missing edges are colored in blue, and we call them supportive nodes. Then we keep adding nodes and edges to each node in an iterative fashion, one node at a time, but as many edges as needed to complete the edges of all previously added nodes marked in red. As it turns out, this simple algorithm deter determines a unique graph and constitutes a method that can be used to build a family of recursive graphs with, with maximal entropy but low algorithmic complexity. That is, graphs that appear statistically random but are, however, of low algorithmic randomness and thus causally or recursively generated just like this one. Indeed, the degree sequence of the graph is the Champer non constant in base 10 that we already saw in a previous unit. This is a transcendental real whose decimal expansion we saw before was Borel normal, and thus of maximal entropy, because it has no repetitions. Indeed, because core node 1 has one link and core node 2 has two links and so on, the degree sequence of this graph is near maximal entropy except for a small number of supportive nodes. Notice that one can also reconstruct exactly the same graph from its degree sequence as we have also proven in our previous work. Interestingly, the sequence of number of edges is a recurrence relation built upon previous iteration values between core and supportive nodes, defined by a beautiful sequence involving the golden ratio. The brackets represent the floor function. But more important, when you look at the adjacency matrix of this graph, it turns out to be very sparse. That is, there are way less links or edges than its greatest possible number of edges among all nodes. And the number of possible edges increases exponentially while the number of actual edges grow linearly. So the edge density of the adjacency matrix vanishes and the adjacency matrix looks with mostly zeros in its entries, meaning that the adjacency matrix is of minimal entropy because it has almost nothing but zeros. This is a striking feature per design because both the adjacency matrix of the graph and the degree sequence of the same graph can uniquely reconstruct the graph from scratch, so they are lossless representations, yet Without knowing the generating source, one description of the graph suggests that the graph is almost maximally random, and the other the description suggests that it is minimally random, hence having divergent entropic values for different features of the same graph. So this helps see how you can choose an arbitrary feature of a graph 
when it comes to assign it an entropy value, and how this is different to algorithmic complexity that is actually invariant to object description, and also actually considers the generating mechanism based on computer programs before making a call. Yet, as we know, the graph can be generated recursively by a short computer program that always produces exactly the same graph, and is thus deterministic and of low algorithmic complexity. Here is a very compact computer program written in the Wolfram language that produces the graph for any arbitrary number of nodes. In spite of its trivial construction, the ZK graph displays all sorts of interesting graph theoretic, dynamical, and complexity properties. For example, the clustering coefficient of the undirected graph asymptotically converges to 0.65, and some properties increase or decrease linearly while others do so polynomially. And the different eigenvalues behave in non-trivial ways. And as we just explained, the entropy of different graph descriptions, even for fully accurate descriptions and not because of a lack of information from the observer point of view, diverge and become trivially dependent on other simple functions, such as edge density or degree sequence normality. While useful for quantifying specific features of the graph that may appear interesting, no graph theoretic or entropic measure can account for the low algorithmic randomness and therefore high causal content of the network. And while algorithmic complexity is difficult to apply and may sometimes not produce the desired results for a lack of computational power, it can, in principle, deal with these cases, and we will see how actually we can, with new methods based on algorithmic probability, try to make uh, good estimations. The standard way to address the question of the random nature of an object such as a graph is to generate graphs that have a specific property while being random in all other aspects, in order to check whether or not a property in question is conserved or is atypical. So one would create random graphs of, for example, the same size, and then we would see how the original graph in question looks like, either special or not, among those random graphs. This approach is based on a so-called principle of maximum randomness, will tend to provide a very rough estimation of what they truly intend to quantify, depending on what definition of randomness is used. This is because we just saw that doing this with entropy, for example, and basically with any computable measure, it may not work and cannot be a robust approach mainly because it does not represent the mathematical definition of randomness, but a stri strictly weaker version of statistical randomness. So one first question is, of course, if we can do better than graph entropy with some other alternative. We will see how to try to fix this by replacing such principle also sometimes called max ent, by a principle based on computability and algorithmic probability theory. One common practice, as we have seen before, is to use popular lossless compression algorithms. However, as we have also seen in previous lectures, and as we have demonstrated in several papers, compression is not much more powerful than Shannon entropy alone, because the way in which they work in practice is very similar to entropy itself. So, in some way, current approaches to algorithmic complexity by way of lossless compression have been more, much more related to statistical properties of the data than to algorithmic properties, as actually algorithmic complexity is supposed to be concerned about. Additionally, in practice, applying compression to small objects is very hard because compression is not sensitive enough. You can do the test, as we have done before trying to compress a small non-random and random files and trying to classify them by compressibility. And you will see that compression will fail at producing any sensible results. This is because of the way in which they work. They have to also encode the uncompressing instructions and, and that is quite unstable in the face of very uh, small data. In the next lectures, we will see how we can devise a fresh alternative to estimating algorithmic complexity, different to compression algorithms. <laughs>
based on finding short computer programs exhaustively.